Hello and welcome to our Ascension Day service. The service this year, as last year, takes a slightly different form to reflect the restrictions that we're under. I hope every one of you who've received either a CD or are phoning in and have seen an order of service, or who are enabled to view this by DVD, can participate as fully as you're able by saying all the words in bold type. So let's keep silence before we begin. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. What are you doing here? We are looking for Jesus. What are you doing here? We have questions to ask. What are you doing here? We seek hope. We seek healing. What are you doing here? We have heard God calling our names. Mindful of our shortcomings, the things we have done or failed to do, we ask God's Spirit for guidance to bring them to God's healing and forgiveness. And we say together, Father, forgive us for not trusting you. Father, forgive us when we forget your love for us and the cost of that love. Father, forgive our willful disobedience and change our hearts. Father, forgive us and send your Spirit to strengthen us. Jesus Christ, Lord of life, give us life again. Spirit of truth, lead us into all truth. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Forgive us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth. Strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as God's forgiven people, we declare his praise in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. O Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose glory veils you from our sight, and in whom we lose our bearings, help us to walk in Jesus' footsteps and preach the gospel of forgiveness among the peoples of the world. Make us ready to receive your Holy Spirit and to be heralds of your kingdom, that 
our home may be in the heavens and all our hope in you, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And now Lizzie brings us our first reading. A reading from the book of Acts, starting at the beginning. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised me with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come up upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder if you've uh, been fortunate enough to travel, perhaps on continental Europe, perhaps uh, somewhere further afield, perhaps even to some uh, churches in the British Isles, and you've seen a ceiling fresco, or a mural, or perhaps just a painting, of the Ascension. And it usually goes something like this. Um, all the more splendid, by the way, when it's in uh, a ceiling dome. Jesus is the centre of the painting. One arm is usually extended, Jesus' right arm, pointing skywards. And his eyes are fixed on where he is to go. Uh, around him are sometimes cherubs, but usually above him is a, a gap in clouds or a ring like a balcony around which are archangels and angels and the whole company of heaven rejoicing in his return. Back on the ground below 
are the first disciples, the future apostles, and the Virgin Mary in most of the pictures and murals. They are robed and haloed and staggered with wonder and rejoicing at the spectacle above them in the sky. I'm sure you've seen something like that somewhere at some time. This day used to be called Holy Thursday, uh, Ascension Day, and it was in the Middle Ages and until quite recently uh, surrounded by a lot of uh, folk practices and superstitions. People believed that the gates of heaven and hell remained open um, throughout the period between Jesus' resurrection and ascension. And people could come and go uh, between the two. The spirits were near. There was a call to put out uh, gifts and food, usually, for the poor. People baked uh, bread. People prepared simple dishes and put out milk and fruit and showed a reflection of God's compassion onto the people who went by. The bakers and anybody who could and did regularly bake would bake a ladder in bread. And the idea was this uh, it was something you could climb up to follow Jesus into heaven, to ascend yourself. Now all these customs and these practices, and indeed the very observance itself of Ascension Day, have gone with the wind. Effectively, they just vanished. Ascension Day is a bit of a forgotten festival. For all I know, hundreds of people may be watching this, but I'm not optimistic, if I'm honest. Um, it's a Thursday evening in the middle of a working week. The media used to pay a sort of nod in its direction. I remember on the old home service, Radio 4, as it later became, uh, a solemn announcement on Ascension Day just before the 8 o'clock news. And now a verse from an Ascension Day hymn. It's a very muffled recording of Hail the Day that Sees Him Rise in glorious mono, dating probably from before the Second World War, was broadcast. It wasn't terribly exciting, but entirely in keeping with Ascension's place as a bit of a Cinderella festival. A principal feast of the church, and in other countries still gloriously surrounded by praise and parade, but largely in these islands lost, gone, almost forgotten. Certainly not the sense of excitement that surrounds festivals such as Easter or a patron saint's day or Christmas. Perhaps it's time to reclaim ascension. How might we do that? Luke's gospel, which we've just heard, depicts Jesus speaking with his disciples just after He's demonstrated the physical resurrection of his body. He showed them his wounds, his prints of love, as Wesley calls them. Jesus has taken a piece of fish and eaten it in their presence. This is the risen, living Lord Jesus Christ and the promises that he would be raised on the third day are true and trustworthy. Jesus goes on at that point to suggest three things which we need, as very much as the first disciples were urged, to take to heart. The first is that their call, the disciples' call and our call, is to go throughout the world proclaiming God. To preach repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And that's something that's become very hard to do. 
it takes a lot of willpower to suggest to people that they might need to change their ways, that they might need to radically reorientate themselves towards God. And yet Jesus envisaged and the church for many centuries practiced the idea that an act of conversion, of turning, an act of repentance, of turning back to God, symbolised perhaps sacramentally, perhaps by a confession of faith, perhaps by baptism, that act of saying sorry and repentance is a core part of what we do. We're not simply asked, and we are asked, to undertake the mission of God in service to others. But we're also asked alongside that, and in a way foundational to that, to say, Faith in Christ is the deepest joy and the ultimate core of human meaning. Turn to God, be healed, be forgiven, receive God's love. And in that act, everything that follows makes the most wonderful sense. The second thing Jesus says is that all his father promised will happen. The promises of God are sure. God works out his promises from year to year. The ways of God in individual circumstances may seem strange. God's movement at times may, let's be honest with ourselves again, very mysterious. And yet at the heart of the universe and the created order, we do have the wonderful promise that everything God says comes to pass. Jesus has gone, but Jesus will return. And how are we to await that return? We may be waiting for some time. We may not. We wait until we have been clothed with power from on high. Don't even start the mission of God. Don't even start preaching repentance and forgiveness until we have received the blessing and gift of the Holy Spirit of God. From baptism through confirmation in the sacraments, the Spirit is called. One of the essentials of the faith to which we're called and which we explore day by day is that God has not left us. Jesus has not left us in his ascended glory, but dwells among us by the indwelling Holy Spirit who shows by works of love and power the Lordship of Christ. The Holy Spirit isn't something confined to certain branches of the church. It's not a, necessarily just a, a Pentecostal thing. We should expect the Holy Spirit to be doing things among us, convicting us of the things we need to change, illuminating scripture until it becomes a blaze before us, giving us words that heal and challenge, but come from God and not our own prejudices. Words of reassurance, gifts of blessing and healing. Let's not begin to reach out without understanding God's presence within us by his Holy Spirit and all that can follow in the way of blessing from that. Three tremendous things. The call to proclaim the need to turn to God, repentance and forgiveness, 
the trustworthy nature of the promises of God. The need to just hold our horses until we receive an awareness of the Holy Spirit or the gift of the Spirit in the first place. Jesus exits the scene in Luke's accounts almost without any fuss at all. He just moves through the disciples and is taken up into heaven. There's no sense in the script of glorious visions uh, of heavenly powers. Uh, without being flippant, he's lost. He's spoken of in Acts as just being lost from sight in a cloud. A bit like if you've been watching space flights, a bit like one of the starships that's gone up. Except this time, uh, again, without being flippant, Jesus doesn't come down until the uh, end of all things. To think of it as some sort of transfiguration experience that illuminates the whole landscape escape is a mistake. It's a very small and glorious event, worth celebrating and more once a year, baking the bread ladders and all that. But at its heart, it's just three small things. Remember the promises. Proclaim the goodness of God and the need to turn to him. And hold on till you receive the Holy Spirit. Christina Rossetti wonderfully said, Heaven can't hold God, which is why he came in Jesus, nor earth sustain, which is why he returned. But we are here his head, heart, hands and feet, and those who praise his name and serve in it too. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness, he humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now Sue leads us in our prayers of intercession, our two-way prayers. All too often, our prayers are only one way, forgetting the role that Jesus has in praying for us, God's children. Our intercessions this evening take the form of a dialogue of Jesus' words from John 17 and our own prayers of response, with plenty of space for reflection between the sections of the prayers. Jesus looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. We respond, Father, may you be glorified in our worship, in our fellowship, in faithful lives and obedient hearts. Jesus prayed, Father, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. We respond, Father, we pray for your children of every race, language and nation. The hungry, the war-weary, the neglected, the rootless. Help us to see them as you look upon them.
Jesus said, My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you, that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. We respond. Father, we pray for ourselves and for one another. Tempted as we are to fall away from you in our disobedience or lack of faith. And we lift to you those who feel assailed by sickness of body, mind or spirit. Jesus prayed, as you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. We respond. Renew your church and make us holy, a temple for your Holy Spirit, that by our worship, our fellowship, and through faithful lives and obedient hearts, all your children may be drawn to you. Jesus said, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they be brought to complete unity, that the world may know that you have sent me and love them, even as you have loved me. Amen. We are called to preach a gospel of repentance and the forgiveness of sins and so to live in peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us there offer those of us in the same room a sign of peace. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God for ever. Look, here is bread and wine. Let us celebrate the Feast of God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. To you, Creator God, who spoke the universe into being by your word, who formed us in your own image, who called us by name. To you we lift our hearts and give you thanks and praise. To you, redeeming God, who was born as one of us in Jesus, who told stories, restored the lost and broken, and broke barriers, who died, and rose for us, and lives and reigns for ever. To you we lift our hearts, and give our thanks and praise. 
to you, sustaining God, who is ever present with us through the Holy Spirit, who calls us, leads us, inspires and upholds us, who brings us into a fellowship beyond earthly ties. To you we lift our hearts and give our thanks and praise. And now we join our voices with those of your people of every time and place as we praise you with the song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Before he parted from his friends, Jesus prepared a last supper to share with them. He took some bread and gave thanks for it. Then he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was all but over, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks for it, and gave it to them to drink. Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Ascended Christ, in the breaking of the bread and the pouring of wine, come to us. As we do now what you did once on earth, be present with us. Breathe your spirit upon this bread and wine. May they become our spiritual food and drink. Breathe your spirit upon us. May we be your body, revealing your presence in the world. Amen. looking for the coming of his kingdom, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. When we drink this cup, we share the blood of Christ. Reveal yourself to us, O Lord, in the breaking of bread, as once you revealed yourself to your disciples. The body and the blood of Christ. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. 
even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son, who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. Amen. As one body, united at your table, we celebrate, Jesus, your rising into glory. Now empower us by your Holy Spirit to be your witnesses in our generation and grant us your blessing of joy that in the temple of our lives we may continually raise the living God. Amen. And now Lizzie again brings us our next reading. May the God known of old in clouds of glory, and the Christ who suffered and rose from the dead, at one with the Spirit who guides and inspires us, make us faithful witnesses to the truth, and the blessing of God, all loving Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer, be with us all today and for evermore. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. They were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. To the people of Jerusalem, let us proclaim your love. To the people of Judea, let us preach forgiveness. To the people of Samaria, let us be a witness. To the people of the world, let us be a faithful servant. Where clouds of uncertainty surround us, help us follow in Jesus' footsteps. When we search for you in heaven, give us grace to find you on earth. And together may we, your people, glorify your name each moment on every step of our life's journey. Amen. <laughs> 